take with you that base download of normal, this postage stamp consensus. And I use the, uh, the term postage stamp because its perception of the possible is um, so tiny, it is laughable. And as long as you keep to that consensus, then no one laughs at you and people think you're credible. Oh, yeah, because everyone's agreeing that their version of normal is, is normal. It's nonsense, but it's perceived as normal. Now, when you step off the postage stamp, uh, because you don't accept that that is the only possibility or a definition of normal, then the postage stamp disciples are all over you. Ridicule, condemnation, condemn him, and all that stuff, right? Um, I've had um, uh, 25, 26 years of it, and I, I quite enjoy it, actually. It's, it's quite funny to see how myopic and programmed people can be um, with such a narrow, narrow perception of potential reality. It's just extraordinary to me. Anyway, um, Noel Edmonds has found out in the last few days um, what happens when you step off the postage stamp consensus. What he did was suggest that your attitude can affect um, your health. Whoa, crikey. That's uh, way out there, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, of course it does. But no, it's too much for the postage stamp consensus. And he also suggested that um, uh, a machine that he's used, uh, basically an electromagnetic machine, um, was an aid, he didn't say it, it was the cure, it was an aid in his um, survival or um, removal, if you want to call it, of a cancer that he had. Well... As the uh, comedian um, Peter Kay said, you'd have thought he'd have walked into your house on Christmas Day and pissed on your kids. Uh, it was ridiculous, the idiotic um, response and the condemnation of him for having that opinion. An opinion, by the way, that can be supported um, by the nature of reality and how electromagnetic uh, technology can make you ill and it can make you um, well depending on the kind of energy, the kind of frequencies that it's giving off. But I'll get into that um, and how this works. I mean, I don't know about Noel Edmonds's machine. I've never seen it, never used it. Um, but I'll talk about the principle on which this kind of stuff works. And I've um, been treated endlessly for decades now with um, electromagnetic uh, and electrical technology. And all I can say is its effects on my health and removing ill health has been absolutely stunning. But let's first of all Look at this um, reaction. Oh dear. The postage stamp disciples were beside themselves. And it's, it's always sad, one way of putting it, pathetic is another way, of seeing slaves to the system running around defending the system that enslaves them. And uh, that brings me to um, Jan Moyer, a journalist, says here, it must be true, um, on the Daily Mail newspaper. Um, this um, was the headline. Noel Noel, or Noel the Noel, uh, insults every victim of cancer. What? By 
looking at possible um, causes of it and possible remedies for it, how is that insulting anyone? I'll tell you what's insulting uh, the victims of cancer, and that is having trillions and trillions of, uh, of dollars spent decade after decade after decade, given in tins and given in, in endless ways to, um, to apparently find a, a, a cure uh, for cancer. And after all that money, all that research, we're still left basically with um, poison, what one doctor called weed killer, chemotherapy, which destroys the immune system and opens you up to further cancer in the future and, and um, endless other uh, diseases or problems, which the uh, immune system would normally sort out. And radiation. What is one of the known causes of cancer? Radiation. I know. Let's treat cancer with radiation. And after all this money, and we still start with that, um, the World Health Organization has warned that worldwide cancer cases are expected to soar by 70% in the next 20 years. But don't let's explore, don't let's debate other um, ways of dealing with this cancer other than the scalpel, chemotherapy, and radiation. Anyway, Jan uh, Moya speaks. She starts, After a long course of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, a friend of mine has been given some bad news. The grueling treatment has failed to wipe out his cancer and now he must have a bone marrow transplant. Which is very sad for her friend. But she's starting out an article which is about to condemn Noel Edmonds for talking about what he believes works for him and what he believes... Um, can be a contributory factor to um, cancer, which is our state of being, our state of mind, our state of emotions. She starts it out with an example of someone who has had the so-called conventional treatment, the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy, and it hasn't worked. It's extraordinary the thought patterns these people must go through. OK, I wonder how her friend, she says, and cancer sufferers like him must feel upon hearing Noel Edmonds chirp that cancer is caused by negative energy. Well, first of all, uh, Miss Moyer, how do you know it's not? Well, the postage stamp consensus says it's not. Yeah, but the postage stamp consensus is stupid. Um, and how must he be feeling? Well, maybe he might think, well, I'm going to have a look at this because maybe there's something in it. No, we must be upset. We must be outraged. Um, this week, she says, the 67-year-old broadcaster seemed to be suggesting that cancer patients only have themselves to blame for becoming ill. I mean, now I'm outraged. No, he wasn't saying that at all. God, dear yeah, these people. Um, the Deal or No Deal, that's a game show for people around the world, host, alleges that he tackled his prostate cancer with something called an um, MPAD, a machine which aims to stimulate cellular resonance in the body. I'll get to all this um, um, be before I, um, I finish this. Um, the makers themselves make no such claims, but Edmonds insists the electromagnetic box, which sends waves through copper coils in a body mat, was central to his recovery. Now, Miss Moyer 
um, won't know this. But the reason that um, people like the manufacturers of this and people throughout the alternative um, health arena do not make claims um, and um, step back and uh, distance themselves from claims made by others about what they produce. The reason all that happens is because although the big pharma cartel can put adverts on the television and tell you um, in detail what their products do or supposed to do, in the alternative arena, thanks not least to the European Union, by the way, it's a criminal offence for them to make any claims, even if um, what they're saying is backed up by laboratory studies. So when um, someone comes out, a, a, a famous name like Noel Edmonds in Britain, and says, this machine's, the, the manufacturers of the machine are, are going to go, whoa, oh no, we're not claiming that, we're not claiming that, for the very reasons that I've just described. Um, the Daily Mail lady goes on. Um, he went on to say, talking about Edmunds, that he was very, very healthy now and only got his cancer because I had gone through a very stressful, very negative period in my life, which, for reasons I'll come to, makes absolute sense. By using pulsed electromagnetism and a series of other things, I'm now free of prostate cancer. And then um, comes uh, a wonderful example of the mental maturity of um, so many mainstream journalists. She says, honestly, he's had the wonder machine for years and he never did anything to help cure Mr. Blobby's skin complaint. Shame on him. For people around the world, Mr. Blobby is a comedy character that um, appeared with Noel Edmonds. And um, for Jan Moyer's um, reference, it was a bloke in a suit, right? Got it? Maybe not. But that's the level we um, are. Here we're talking about something um, extremely serious and relevant to people's lives. Oh, Mr. Blobby. On a more serious note, oh, thank goodness for that. No respectable doctor in the world thinks that negative attitude causes cancer. Okay. How can she say that when there are so many apparently respected doctors in the world. Um, and this is the other thing, you see. With the postage stamp consensus, only doctors know anything about health. Only scientists know anything about reality. It's not true. It's not even nearly true. I mean, it's, it's staggeringly untrue. But it's the postage stamp consensus perception of truth. And because these journalists, like this lady, are uh, postage stamp disciples, their um, version of everything is based on the fact that only doctors know about health and only scientists know about um, reality. And uh, then she goes on about um, Edmunds' uh, mumbo jumbo that gets printed next to horoscopes in a supermarket magazine. Um, and uh, basically, uh, that's not good when it comes to life-threatening diseases such as cancer. No, the chemotherapy and radiotherapy that didn't work for your friend is um, what we should be talking about um, in terms of the only credible treatment for cancer. And then Edmonds went on a, a morning television program, been on it myself, to be interviewed by um, a guy called Philip Schofield and uh, a lady called Holly Willoughby. It's a program called... Um, this morning, you know, that bastion of brain cell activity. And as usual, Edmonds was saying something different to the postage stamp. And these two are postage stamp disciples, like almost everyone else in their profession. And thus, they had to um, be outraged, like the public had been told to be outraged, because that's what happens all the time, you know. 
you know, so many things go go past people. But but then suddenly they're told to be outraged. You must be outraged about this. You must be outraged at what this Noel Edmonds has said. Oh yes, I'm outraged now. And of course, the these people who um, are always looking for their public image, they also have to be outraged, just like the public's been outraged and told to be outraged when they interview people who they've been told to be outraged about. And so um, uh, Noel Edmonds called the interview a stitch up. He wasn't allowed, he said, to, um, to answer questions at any length. I know that one. And um, that uh, the interviewers weren't listening to what he said. Well, of course they weren't. That's how it works. My goodness me. Um, I could write the manual on it. And by the way, um, in um, connection with that article, in, in, in my uh, new book, uh, Phantom Self, I quote a guy called Dr. Richard Day um, a number of times through the book because what he said to a group of doctors in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1969 about how the world was going to change and, 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 and how the world was going to be transformed has been so staggeringly accurate in terms of how the world has changed since. In detail, great detail, as I, I, not only in fans himself, I'm going into all this on, in the World Tour events. Um, and one of the quotes he made in 1969 was this. Um, uh, Dr. Richard Day um, was a big time Rockefeller family insider. He was an executive of Planned Parenthood, which was a Rockefeller organization. He said, we can cure almost every cancer right now. Information is on file in the Rockefeller Institute if it's ever decided that it should be released. And he said it wasn't being released because what, we've got to keep the population down and they might, might as well die of cancer as anything else. So from that point of view, the World Health Organization projection of a massive increase in cancer, not least all the radiation uh, in the atmosphere now, and the food that people eat and what's in the water, etc., um, is a very good thing from their point of view because they're deeply, deeply um, sick. And of course, the last thing this system wants, run by people like that and the people that control people like that, is actually a, a real cure for cancer. That's why all this money is spent, all this research is done, and basically um, we get no further, except here and there in some areas. Um, and then, um, this was also in the Daily Mail, um, it was an interview with Noel Edmonds, Negative Energy and How I Invited My Little Friend Cancer to Leave Me, and it's by this lady, um, Rebecca Hardy, another um, post and stamp uh, disciple, who um, basically took the piss through this article, been there myself, um, and um, as I've said many times, being called mad by an idiot is a compliment. Um, and the great irony um, is that in the same paper, not, not just the same paper, the same edition as this, was this article, which they took absolutely seriously. And why, uh, it will become clear in a, minute, in a minute. Headline. How the way a man rows with his wife shows which illness he'll get in old age. And this, in the same paper as that piss take of Noel Edmonds, um, is taken deadly seriously. Okay, here we go. It's no great surprise that bickering with your other half can have an impact on your health. But just how serious depends on what type of row you have, scientists have found. Research shows that the way husbands and wives argue can be linked to specific health problems later in life. When you argue, what are you exchanging? Negative thought negative emotion. Therefore, what are you inflicting on your own body? Negative thought, negative emotion. And these are postage stamp people who um, are accepted as the fountain of knowledge by the postage stamp consensus media, saying that, in effect, thought and emotion 
negative thought and emotion, what I would call imbalanced, disharmonious thought and emotion, affects your health in, in some detail, which it does. And that's what Edmonds was saying. Nothing more. Anyway, it says um, scientists, keyword, scientist, scientist, he must be credible. This is the, these, these, for the postage stamp consensus, you see, these are key trigger words. So um, it's like scientist. Oh, he's a scientist. He must know about what he's saying. Try this one. Doctor. He's a doctor. He must know about health. No one else does. Only doctors. It's like, it's like living in a world of software programs. Just repeating the program. And the reason that they're taking the piss out of Noel Edmonds um, and they take the piss out of me is because I haven't been through their um, postage stamp consensus and bought it. But this man or these people that are saying the same as Edmonds, they're scientists. Oh, oh, OK. Well, we better sit up and listen then. Scientists say they can determine some husband's medical complaints for 20 years following a 15 minute argument. So negative thought and emotion doesn't have a lot of an effect then. Um, same paper as the hat. It's, it's hilarious. Um, the link between emotions and health out outcomes was most pronounced for men, but some of the key correlations were also found in their wives. The, st the study, which tracked the lives of 150 heterosexual couples since 1989, revealed outbursts of anger can predict heart problems later in life. And shutting down emotionally or stonewalling during arguments increases the risk of ailments such as a bad back or stiff muscles. Lead author Claudia Haas of the University of California in Berkeley, you see, University, Berkeley, must be taken seriously. Um, we looked at marital conflict conversations that lasted just 15 minutes and could predict the development of health problems over 20 years for husbands based on the emotional behaviours that they showed during these 15 minutes. Uh, Professor Haas added, our study shows that these different emotional behaviours can predict the development of different health problems in the long run. Senior author Robert Levinson said, for years we've known that negative emotions are associated with negative outcomes for health. So why is everyone taking the piss out of Noel Edmonds? He's just saying the same. Oh, he presents a game show. This is a scientist. But truth is truth is truth, whoever says it. And bollocks is bollocks, whoever says it. However many letters they have, have after their name. He says, um, this is one of the many ways that our emotions provide a window for glimpsing important qualities of our future lives. It's freaking hilarious. So how does all this work? The postage stamp consensus has a version of reality even though quantum physics shows it to be nonsense, an aversion of the human body, which is, uh, and I'm being optimistic, in the Stone Age. When you look at um, reality, um, it's dominated, at our level of it anyway, by electricity and electromagnetism. It's the way information is communicated it's the way thoughts work. I mean, how does the brain work with electricity? How does it communicate with electricity? How does DNA communicate with electricity and frequency and vibration? Um, Nikola Tesla, the uh, a real scientist who died penniless in a hotel room in New York in 1943 because he was a real scientist challenging the postage stamp, and who, um, in fact, gave us our, 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 the basis of our electrical systems to this day, 
he was um, creating technology and showing it to work that was tapping into these electrical, electromagnetic levels of reality and turning it into usable warmth and power, which those behind the, uh, the power industry did not want because basically they could they, once the, the machine was made that, that was interacting and, and with the uh, electromagnetic electrical level of reality and turning it into usable warmth of power, once you had the, t uh, the uh, machine, they didn't cost anything because it was just using natural um, phenomenon to give you your power. It's the last thing that the power companies want or wanted. That still wanted. Uh, and that's why he ended up uh, penniless in, in a, a New York hotel room in 1943. And by the way, those same forces that are saying we must get rid of fossil fuels because of global warming, that hoax, they're the same people who are suppressing this free energy technology that Tesla was using um, in the first part of the 20th century. And he knew that um, everything was vibration, everything was energy, everything was uh, electromagnetism at our level of reality. And so um, to give you an example, it's come out actually only in the last couple of weeks. Scientists said it, so it must be true. Um, which is, is a classic example of what I'm talking about. This is the headline. You better believe it. Dancing hares lead bumblebees to pollen by sensing electrical signals given out by flowers. How bumblebees find flowers to gather nectar and pollen was largely a mystery until now. Scientists sits up, takes notice, have found tiny vibrating hairs uh, may explain how the industrious insects sense and interpret signals transmitted by flowers, leading them to the plant so they can gather pollen. While it was known that flowers communicate with pollinators by sending out electrical signals, experts were previously unsure how bees detect the fields. How bumblebees find flowers to gather nectar and pollen was largely a mystery. Now scientists have discovered that static electricity causes the hairs to move and helps the bees to find a source of pollen. Now, if I'd have said that, or someone else who's not a scientist would have said that before these scientists said that, uh, and I've been writing and talking for years about all this electrical phenomenon, electrical communication that um, we're all part of, then we would have been crazy and, and to be dismissed. But a scientist says it, ooh, and all this is, is an example of what I'm talking about. I've been writing about for years, the, the way electricity and electromagnetism um, is the way that, we, that information is communicated um, that uh, allows the reality that we, um, we experience to be. And it's, it's the same principle as um, a computer. You've got um, the um, information going around a computer electrically, and when it's all working in balance, then the computer's working, working perfectly. When that electrical communication gets disturbed, disharmonized, distorted, you see the result on the screen in a distorted um, uh, projection of whatever you're looking at. Or you'll say, and or you'll say, uh, oh my goodness me, my computer's so slow today. Yes, because the information is not being communicated to the optimum extent and speed through the electrical communication system of the computer. Now, as I've said, we, um, uh, as, um, if you like, human bodies, um, work in the same way. This is a biological computer. I even heard a scientist call it a biological computer recently. I fell off my chair. I've been calling it that for decades. Because um, the brain works electrically. DNA works electrically. The, 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 this is an electrochemical organism. And if the electromagnetism, electrical, is um, not um, working properly, if it's disturbed or distorted or disharmonized, then so is the chemical and so is the, the, the rest of the body. And we call that dis-ease, disease, disharmony. And this can be um, disharmonized by um, uh, radiation, by stuff in the food um, and stuff in, 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 in the water, because just as the electrical and electromagnetic affect the chemical, the chemical affect the other way. And so um, when you look at acupuncture, what does it do? 
It's putting in needles along meridian lines of energy, which is just like the, the motherboard on a computer. And um, it's um, directing and um, balancing the flow of this energy through these meridian lines of the body so that the body is an electrical, electromagnetic, informational harmony. And um, these um, acupuncture meridians uh, go in circuits. So you might have um, a blockage in the circuit, which eventually goes through the head, um, in the foot. And thus that affects the head because of um, the blockage in the foot. So when people say, well, it's stupid, that acupuncture, they're putting needles in your foot to, to help a headache. Well, if the blockage that's causing the headache is in the foot, there ain't a lot of sense in putting a needle in your bloody head, is it? I mean, ridiculous. But I see, arrogance and ignorance, they, they always work in, 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 um, in pairs. And so um, people who have not taken the trouble to find out uh, what they're talking about then condemn others who have. So we um, have a situation where if our electromagnetic levels are um, in Im imbalance, we are healthy. If they're out of balance, and it can happen for many ways, and it can happen through thought and emotion. Thought and emotion are expressions of uh, frequency which express themselves electrically and electromagnetically. Thoughts can be um, electrically measured, right? And electrical um, frequencies going out from the brain, going out from the body through emotions, can destabilize if they're um, you know, involved in fear or anxiety or depression. They can destabilize the electromagnetic balance of the body, which then reflects through to what we call physical dis-ease um, in some way or other. Now, going the other way, if you have electromagnetic technology that's um, properly effective and used in the right way, it can emit frequencies which balance out and harmonize the imbalances which take you from being imbalanced and diseased into a sense uh, or a state of balance and health. I'm, you know, not saying for a word that, uh, for a moment rather, that um, every one of these machines works brilliantly like every, every other one. But I've been on these machines, not the one Noel Edmund's talking about, but others, and the effect on my health has been fantastic and so quick, it's unbelievable. Often, not always, but often in my experience, it's, it's, it's been so fast. And now the EU is desperate to ban them because the EU is just a front um, on the health issue anyway for the big pharma global pharmaceutical cartel that wants rid of anything that is alternative to its scalpel, drug, radiation, um, multi, multi billion bonanza feeding off human ill health. So when you look at this principle of electromagnetic balance, electromagnetic imbalance of the, of the body, this explains why you get more people um, often, these, these groups of people that get cancer around nuclear power stations that are leaking radiation, than you do in the general population. And you get uh, more of uh, rare types of cancer because the radiation is impacting upon the electromagnetic field of, of, of the people that are in that area. And, and so you get more um, effects of that. Um, all this electromagnetic technology that is now dominating society is doing the same. Having pulsing electromagnetic um, uh, energy frequencies on your ear 
all day long. I mean, that's not going to cause a problem. Are you having a laugh? And science, you see, says, oh, there's no known link between nuclear power stations and nuclear power leaks and, 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 and a greater prevalence of cancer. Well, those deep, deep in the inside, they absolutely know that there is a cause and effect and they know why there's a cause and effect. They just don't want us to know. But the great body of, um, of so-called experts are so clueless about the electrical, electromagnetic nature of everything and therefore um, its cause and effect possibilities that they can't understand how uh, being near a nuclear power station could affect you in terms of your bodily health. Well, what it does is it affects your um, electromagnetic balance and through that your health. I mean, it's so simple. But what science says is if we can't explain it, it can't be happening. All the time you, you basically hear that uh, mantra. So what has happened to Noel Edmonds uh, this week is a classic of the way the postage stamp consensus works. Um, you uh, squeeze uh, people's perception of the possible. You squeeze people's perception of reality and thus the possibility of changing reality. And then you turn them into... Um, not just sheep, but sheepdogs keeping all the other sheep in line, as Edmonds has found this week. Um, and you uh, ignore all these other possibilities, not just in treating health, but in endless other things that could be making this world a much nicer, better, healthier place. Because it doesn't suit your agenda. That's your agenda. You don't want people here. And so when people like Edmonds and, and me in the last 25 years step off this uh, postage stamp consensus, well, woo, all the disciples are, um, are there. And um, you don't have a question. You, you never hear when you see these kind of scandals going on. Oh, condemn him. Simple question. It's what intelligent people would ask. Does it work? Does it work? whether it's this machine or whatever, does it work? A doctor said it can't. Well, doctors don't understand what the body is, for goodness sake. Think for yourself. So, anyway, I'm going to be talking about all this um, at the weekend at the Brixton Academy, um, among vast other connected things. Um, and when you look at reality as it really is, as opposed to what we're told it is, then mysteries galore um, just fade away and become obvious in terms of understanding them. We might even um, we might even solve the mystery of um, why um, or how so many mainstream journalists manage somehow to summon the brain power to breathe every few seconds. I, I, I look on in astonishment when I read articles like that, that they can manage it. Oh, I'm going blue, I'm going blue, what's happening, what's happening? You forgot to breathe again, breathe. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're a journalist, aren't you? Yeah, how did you know? Intuition. 